Hello, my name's Lynn Chapman and I'm a children's book author and illustrator. And in this film, I'd like to look at one of the books that I did quite recently with Julia Jarman. I did the illustration, she wrote the text um, called Bears on the Stairs. And it's great fun, um, as are all of Julia's texts. And it features these three fun bears. And I thought we could look at drawing them all really, the, the great big fat grizzly one, the little kind of fierce one, and then this big ugly koala. I know that, uh, strictly speaking, koala isn't a bear. And I've been told that on many occasions by school children when I read this in schools. But, uh, I'd quite like to show you how to draw the koala picking his nose, because that's one of the things that always appeals to children when I read this story. I thought we'd start with the big bear. So, as ever, I'm going to start with simple shapes to help me to plan what the things are going to do and where they're going to go. So, that's going to be the head and the body on this character is not round, it's going to be more like a big sort of pear shape, I think. That sort of shape. Now again, I'm doing this slightly darker than I normally would because you need to be able to see it but I would normally do it more gently so that it disappears under the sketch when you're actually working over the top. Now, he's got arms that are sort of hunched up so he doesn't got much of a neck so he's got some shoulders hunched up here because his arms are high and he's got one arm up in the air like that doing this very roughly and I'll correct it in a bit and then he's got the other arm again shoulder hunched up coming out behind him and down that way okay I know it doesn't look much, much like a bear at the moment it will do as we go along he's got one leg up in the air so we're going to sort of take his knee up here somewhere and they're quite short legs really compared to the size of his body. What I'm doing there is bending his knee and then coming back so that his foot's up in the air. And we're going to see the underside of his foot sort of there. The other foot I want to put up here because he's going to be his knee up. So we're going to have another foot, which is actually going to be sort of drawn there in the middle of his belly, which doesn't really make a lot of sense at the moment, but it will do when I get his knee drawn in. So let's have that sort of knee up like that. Back of his foot into the back of his knee. Yeah. I think we need to get his eyes in to sort of establish how his face is, where it's facing. So let's put a couple of eyes maybe about there. And his nose, nice big, very nose. That's going to be that sort of black bit on the end of his nose. And then he's going to have his sort of chops there. Yeah, yeah. Now that really gives us enough for the time being. And I'm going to now work back over the top of that and try and improve it. And it's this is the lovely thing about doing it this way. I make loads of mistakes, as I'm sure you do. But it doesn't matter because you just correct it as you go. But it, it's much easier when you've got a skeleton underneath to work to. So, okay, let's start with his head. I think he's going to have a more shaped top of his head. A little bit of a... If I have a dint there, so it's almost like two eyebrow bumps really, I suppose. But his eyebrows, in fact, are going to make him look angry, because he's a bit grumpy. And facing down like that, slanting down in the middle. Okay, and we could have him looking at us actually, couldn't we? Now, let's do some sort of fluffy bits under his eyes. And put those ears. Put one bit of shadow there, makes it more three dimensional. And the other one here. There. I want to put the nose in first so as I can gauge where all this is going to go, his mouth's going to go before I draw the shape of his head. So let's get this lovely big nose drawn in because that's going to look great. Black nostrils. And what I'm going to do is sort of shade it lightly but leave 
an unshaded section there which just makes it look a bit shiny again three dimensional and there's this sort of other area on bears where it's kind of paler it incorporates its nose and its chops so the chops going to come there I'm going to bring this up into and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up into a big smile but rather than just one straight sweep like that sometimes it's quite nice if you put a dint in it like that it just gives it a bit more character which looks even better once you get the little whiskery bits in and of course his pointy teeth and if you don't make them too even on a character like this so I'll have them slightly irregular it just makes them look a bit more wild now we don't want such a round shaped face but now that I've got this in it's easier to shape it, so I'm going to bring that round there, and that's going to become his chin. So let's just put his chin in under the teeth. There we go. And then I'm going to make this a little bit more of a shape there, a bit furry, and echo that sort of dint that goes in and then comes out again. So you start to get a far more characterful shaped head. It yeah, doesn't actually look at us terribly effectively. It's sometimes quite difficult because it's very subtle differences in where the dots are. It makes an awful lot of difference. Right, okay, let's get these other ones drawn in. So I'm do, using these kind of, well, I think of them as shaggy marks, really, <laughs> to create the feeling of the fur. And, if, and especially on elbows, that really gets across the feeling that it's a bit scraggy. Here we go. Now, bear shapes tend to be like a bear's paws tend to be like a, a mitten. So you've got the thumb, but then the rest of it is just one big lump, which then makes a lot more sense when you put some nasty cloth on. Like that. Okay, and let's do the other one before we carry on with the body. So. I'm going to make that shoulder slightly lower. It looks just a little over high to me now. There we go. And I'm checking as I'm doing this that things are the same, roughly the same length. Um, because it's fine to alter it as you go along. So his thumb, ten thumbs tend to be, <laughs> you can't see me, on the inside. Um, so his thumb will be there. The mitten bit's there. Shaggy bits on his elbows again, under there. Now, animals have pads underneath, which is a lovely feature. So you've got the central pad in the middle of the mitten section, and then you've got all the little pads, fingers and thumb. Okay. I've realised I've given him four claws and three pads. Ooh, there we go. Now, I, I want to try and shape his body a bit more. Um, what I'm going to do is make this bit sort of come out for sort of like a full shaggy chest and then dint it in a bit so it's going in and out again for his fat shaggy belly. It's going to come down into his very bottom and then the same sort of thing is going to happen here. I'm going to make it wider, just dint it slightly in and then come out again for a big furry bottom. It just, it, you know, it's subtle stuff, but it just makes a difference. So now we can really see whether the legs are looking right, and they don't look bad. So let's get this one in here. And the knees, like the elbows, you make sure they're good and shaggy. I think I'll move that back of his knee over slightly to there. And I'm gonna make that end of his back foot Slightly more shapely, so slightly thinner, I think, at the toe end, like that. And again, pads, so one big pad, two, three, four little pads, and then a great big claws, which may help the character. So this is our opportunity to look again at things being the right size. The front foot is going to be slightly nearer to us than this foot, so if anything, it wants to be slightly bigger. 
and that looks about the same size to me. So what I'm going to do is just bring it down a bit more. And again, that's subtle, subtle stuff. And it wouldn't look really wrong if you didn't do it. But it just looks more right, if you remember. And chuggy bits on his knees. Putting that down there. And that says it now comes from the back of the foot. Brilliant, that's sort of there, more or less there. Now all we need really is a banister for him to slide on so he's not in midair. So again, I'm going to sketch this in roughly first. If I get it in more or less the right position. In fact, I think he wants to be more there. Yeah, I think that's about right. I put a slight, really slight curve into that, just adds a little bit of extra dynamism. And then to make it three dimensional, just sort of echoing that shape below it. The side. And then we'll just put some uprights at regular intervals. And I think what we can do is put some whoosh marks behind it and that look quite good. Another trick is, is movement marks. Um, where this hand is coming down the banister, you get sort of like echoes of where it's been before. So that thumb was previously there and before that it was there and before that it was there. And that gives you a sense of movement. So you can just do that with all bits of him. So perhaps let's do it with his knee here. And maybe with this hand. So it's always on the edge that's sort of just been there. You would never have to do it on this side, otherwise it would look as though it was going backwards and that would, wouldn't work at all. So, so I think that's uh, about done really.